Good morning, kings and queens. I am Speaker Jay Barnett. Good morning, kings and queens. I am Jay Barnett, and I'm so blessed uh, to be able to share with you guys this morning on this Easter Sunday morning. Thank you, Brother Sammy, for the opportunity to share with the congregation on this Easter Sunday. And listen, I don't want to take too much of your time. I want to go ahead and get started. I want to go ahead and pray, and um, then we'll get into the word. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for thy people. I thank you, Lord God, that you are covering us during this challenging times, God, across our country. I thank you, God, that you are shielding us, Father. I thank you that you're shielding our families, Father, that you're even protecting our jobs. I thank you, Lord God, that all of our worries that we can lay it at your feet. And I give you praise that as his word go forth, that you speak through me and use me. And I give you praise and I thank you, God. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. Again, thank you guys for this opportunity. Um, I, I'm a therapist um, Monday through Saturday, and I, I see a lot of individuals who deal with a plethora of issues as it pertains to uh, uh, emotional uh, uh, discord or emotional challenges, whether it's mental health issues or mental health disorders and a wide range of different things that people are dealing with, whether it's from traumatic experience from childhood, whether it's from an accident that, can, that have caused PTSD and some of the things of that nature. But what most of us don't realize, whether you come into our office or not to see a therapist, we've all had a mental breakdown. At some point in our life, we've had a mental breakdown. And some of you right now, because of the time that we in, may feel like you're going to have a mental breakdown. You're going to break down mentally at some point if you have not. But just how our world has changed. We've all been com uh, uh, confined to our homes across the country. Some uh, uh, have even more strict rules to where you can only be out a certain time and you have to be in and any any time you're out past that time you know you may be ticketed so a lot of us and especially for the individuals that are used to being busy and we're used to our lives having a routine and having a regimen so this is a very challenging time but i come to encourage you to let you know that you're not by yourself and I want to speak from the topic called the breakdown in the garden. The breakdown in the garden. Sometimes, believers, a breakdown is necessary. And some of you may say, <laughs> what in the world are you talking about? Why would a breakdown be necessary? Sometimes the breakdown has to happen in order to reveal what God is really wanting to do through you because it's easy to internalize it and take it as if why is God doing this to me rather than us see it what is it that God wants to do through me so the breakdown is necessary because he has to break us for us to surrender to his will to surrender to his calling to surrender to his voice see we can get so caught up in ourselves that we forget that there's a divine purpose that we all at some point will either surrender to or we're going to forfeit it and it's going to cause even more challenges because we're never going to be fulfilled because now we're chasing things and chasing people and chasing success to fulfill the nourishment that only fulfilling the will and the purpose of God can really satisfy us. And in the text, when Luke talks about Jesus' experience in the Garden of Gethsemane, so many of us, we read it and, and we read it from the, the perspective that we see Jesus go in, he takes a disciple, he goes and pray, he comes back, he sees the disciple sleep, why are you sleeping? He goes back and pray, but we really don't focus on what happened in the garden. 
And just to give you some, some context on, on what a mental breakdown is, a mental breakdown is a wide range of conditions that affects and impacts your mood, your thinking, and your behavior. So when the scripture says in Luke, the 22nd chapter, 44, and being in agony, he prayed. And being in agony, when you look in that word agony, and being in anguish, he prayed. How did Jesus get to that place? For the first time in the scriptures, for us as human beings, and if you take your time and read through this and what happened in that garden, for the first time, we see Jesus to be just like us. Because remember, he knew no sin, but he became sin for us. For the first time, he felt what we are feeling right now during this pandemic. He felt the anguish. He felt the war within his spirit. He felt the war within his flesh. But more importantly, he felt what many of us are feeling right now in our minds. Because there's some of you right now that feel like you're losing your mind. You're not losing your mind, but the conditions that we're in is impacting our mood, how we think, and is impacting our behavior. So when you break down ang anguish, I mean agony, I'm sorry, and, and being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as it were drops of blood falling down to the ground. And let me really paint this picture for you. And I want to, really want you to, to imagine this. What Jesus is experienced from a medical perspective is what you will call hematidrosis. This is a condition that, that is described in medical dictionary as an excretion of blood or blood pigment in your sweat. Where did this come from? Jesus was having a mental breakdown and his nervous system was a wreck because of what he was getting ready to go through. Because he was carrying the weight of the world on his shoulder. He was carrying our abuse. He was carrying our molestation. He was carrying our abandonment. He was carrying our rejection. He was carrying our depression. He was carrying our anxiety. He was carrying our bipolar, our schizophrenia, our drug addiction, our porn addiction. All of this stuff Jesus was carrying and it broke him down to the point that he begins to sweat blood. And as Luke described it, as the blood is dropping down as he's praying, and you can just imagine during this time, the anxiety that he's feeling, that I'm getting ready to die. I'm getting ready to be tortured. I'm getting ready to be beat up, spit on. I am getting ready to be treated like an animal. And there's nothing that I can do about it. His palms are sweating. His blood pressure has rose, rose. His heart, he's having heart palpitations. His pupils are dilated. And he's crying to God, asking him, God, can you take this away from me? Is there another way? Because in this moment, it's fight or flight. So when we are having our moments of breakdown, when we're having our moments where we feel like we can't go any further, let us think about what Jesus did during the time he was having his breakdown in the garden. And let's be honest, some of us are having a breakdown in our homes, our gardens are at our job, our gardens are look pretty, our gardens are, 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 are our cars. Our gardens are our jobs, our gardens are our spouses, our gardens are our families. We have a breakdown in all of these different gardens. And he, he, here he is in his garden. Jesus can't even stand to pray. Because if I can really go a little deeper and to give you a, a common a, a, a culture of the Jews, they would stand and pray 
It was how they honored God during that time. They stood up and prayed. But his anguish and his mental breakdown broke him down so far that he could only kneel and pray. The angels came and strengthened him. He got up just for a little bit, but then again, it broke him down again. And you think about combining the physical, the physical pain that he's feeling. You break this down with the physiological symptoms. Man, that's not even enough time to really break down what is happening during this time that he's in the garden. And what separates Jesus from us is that he made a decision that would not benefit him momentarily, but he made a decision that would benefit an eternity. And I really want you to think about that. And I want you to think about that from the place that what do you do or how do you decide, how do you make your decisions during or after a breakdown? Are you making a decision that's gonna benefit you long-term or do you make a decision that could only benefit you short-term? Because here Jesus was, face not only with death, but face with something that he couldn't stop. He couldn't change. And guess what? God didn't answer his prayer at that time. But what separated him during this breakdown, because he had to feel it. It was the only way that he can connect to us. And guess what? It is how we connect to God. So when you are having an emotional breakdown, you're not crazy. There's nothing wrong with you. That means you are a human. If you feel like your mind is playing tricks on, there's nothing wrong with you. You are human. If you feel like your palms are sweaty, your heart is racing, you're having a panic attack, all those things are human because guess what? That's what Jesus felt in all of this. But what separates Jesus during this time is that he made a decision that it wasn't about him. That he became sin. I like what Isaiah said. And Isaiah talked about this. And he said. Isaiah said. But he was wounded for our transgression. And he was bruised for our iniquities. And for the chastisement of our peace. He was reprimanded for us to have peace. Think about that. He was reprimanded for us to have peace. And by his stripes, we are healed. By his stripes, we are healed in our minds. We're healed in our bodies. We're healed in the spirit. So I want to encourage you this morning to, to know that God knows exactly what you're feeling. Because he watched his son go through it. And God didn't stop it. Because he needed Jesus to feel the weight that many of us are carrying today. So this is not a time to feel as if you are alone. This is not a time to feel like no one understands. Because even if people don't understand, Jesus understands. Because you know why? He's been there. He knows what it's like to have a mental breakdown. Here he is. To where he's so nervous, he's so afraid and scared about what's about to happen to him that he begins to sweat blood. His sweat glands are compressed to where he feels like, man, what am I to do with all of this? God, is there another way? And many of us are looking for another way. And we look in all the wrong places rather than looking in the direction to the hills which come in all of our help. So I want to encourage you on this Sunday morning 
that your help comes from God. Do not feel hopeless. Just because you're in a hopeless situation or you feel that you're in a situation that you cannot do anything about does not mean that you are hopeless. You are not hopeless because he came to give hope to the hopeless. I think in Romans talks about hope does not disappoint. It does not disappoint if you continue to hold fast. Know that God is with you. And I wanted to keep this simple. And I know uh, 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 Brother Sammy only gave me about 10 to 12 minutes. And there's a lot to kind of to really to, to, to pour into. And But I just want to really make sure that this breakdown in the garden was necessary for Jesus to get to the next level that God had him, that, had, that God had prepared for him. So don't see your breakdown as a breaking for you or of you, but see it as a breaking point to push you to where God really wants you. You may not have, have had a breakdown or you, or you may not have had a panic attack, but maybe your thoughts you're feeling broken in your thoughts. You're feeling broken in your heart. You're feeling broken in your spirit because of what is going on around you. And that's okay. That's completely normal. There's nothing wrong. Jesus felt all of this that we're feeling right now. But I like what Paul said. Now, I don't want to give you the scripture. That way you guys can have it. I want to give you the scripture. And I like what Paul says in 2 Corinthians. I think Paul talks about that his strength is made perfect in our weakness. Strength is made perfect in our weakness. We're, many of us are in weak moments because our faith is being tested. Yeah, because see, it's a difference between believing God and trusting God. And, and, and guess what? You know, doubt is not the antithesis of faith, it's unbelief. Unbelief is the antithesis of doubt. I mean, I'm sorry, of faith. And so I just want to, to give you that, that this is a time either you want to trust God because you can believe in anything. There's a lot of us believe in people that we don't trust. So this is the time. Do you trust him? Because if you trust him, you're going to trust him with everything that you have before him in your garden. I don't know what your garden is like. I don't know what you're dealing with. I don't know who you're going through with. I don't know what you're going through, but I'm here to tell you that after the breakdown, there is a breakthrough. And Jesus' breakthrough was him rising on that third day. That was God's answer to him. God did not answer him at the garden. But guess what he did? He did strengthen him in his time of weakness. And for that, we are stronger. And just as God sent an angel to strengthen Jesus, God will send an angel to strengthen you. He will send somebody. Somebody to give you word. Somebody to encourage you. To strengthen you in your weakness. So I pray that what I've shared with you will bless you on this Sunday morning. I pray that your faith fail you not. I pray that you continue to stand wherever you are. Stand. I pray that you continue to believe God for the best. So many times we say, oh, well, uh, uh, you, you hope for the best and, and uh, pray for the worst or hope for the best or something like that. I, I can't really remember, but believe God for the best, period. Period. And just know that during this time, that if you truly trust God, no matter where you are, he is faithful to do exactly what he said he's going to do. And I stand on that. And I pray that you stand on that on this Sunday morning. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this time. We thank you, God, that so many around us have had mental breakdowns. But God, I thank you that during the time that they've had a breakdown or feel like they're breaking down, 
that God, you sent an angel to strengthen them, to be with them during this time. You sent an angel to encourage them, an angel to lift them up in their faith, to lift them up in their walk, Father, that they do not, Lord God, fall victim to their breaking moments, God, that they do not allow the enemy, God, to speak doubt, the enemy to speak death, God. I bind the spirit of suicide. I bind the spirit of depression, God. I bind the spirit, Lord God, of domestic violence. I bind the spirit of child abuse. God, I bind the spirit of frustration, God, irritation, God, anxiety, Father. I cast down, God, all of these conditions and these different elements, God, that challenge us emotionally and mentally during this time, God, that we are restricted. Because, God, though we may be restricted from our jobs, from our friends, Lord God, and from the world that we know, but we're not restricted from you. And I bless you and I thank you that we can call on you any time of the day, Father. I give you praise and I bless your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, guys. God bless.